In today's show, I'm talking about the Power App Scrollable Screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we use that scrollable screen. When sometimes you need a little bit more flexibleness with your canvas, right? So I'm going to show you how to pull that into your app, show you some different ways to show and hide it, how to patch based on whether or not it's show, shown or hidden. I don't know how you say that, but you get the idea. We're just going to kind of work with that component and just to add this skill set into your tool bag. Should be fun. Should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to talk about the Power Apps scrollable screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at how that, or sometimes you might see it called Canvas One, but how you can add this component into your environment and don't just think of it as a scrollable screen, but we're going to show you how to use it just as a separate component. And then we're going to kind of show you how to hide and show things in there and just have some different fun with it so it gives you more options when you're building your Power Apps. And keep in mind that this is going to work for both a tablet app or a mobile app. So either way, I'm going to show you on a tablet app, but it won't matter. So, you know, let's just switch over to my desktop. I'll take, a, take you through a couple of demo apps, and then we'll talk about how you guys can build it. So let's just switch over. For this demo app, the idea I went with was, you know, when I get an approval, so I'm going to submit a request, I want to choose what departments I need and then have the different inputs show up for those cards. So for example, if I'm like, hey, I want to have accounting approve this. Then we get the approval for accounting. But I'm like, oh yeah, I want IT, there's IT. Oh yeah, I did need HR. You know what, I need finance too. Notice as I plug these in, as I click on these different um, check boxes over here, we're seeing different elements show up over here. And so this looks a lot like a gallery, but this is actually the scrollable screen component called Canvas One, as it's like default name, that we just went and stole, and I brought it over here to kind of reinforce this idea that it doesn't have to be a whole scrollable screen. You could have just a simple scrollable section like this, so you could kind of have dynamic uh, inputs in here. Also, you notice up here, you know, these are all input related, and they all got fun pictures of Chewy. Notice he's laying on the couch on all of them. <laughs> no judgment here. But notice then now if I go here, I want how much do you want to approve? And so if I type in 100, no big deal. But if I go to 1,000, ooh. And so that's just another data card. But I just want to kind of reinforce, you know, you can have different things. It doesn't have to just be inputs. You know, you're just to be able to stack these things up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to build this at a very high level. And then we'll come back over here because once we've built this and we understand how that canvas works, what I really want to go with you guys then is explain how does the submit button work, right? For example, if I get rid of Amy here, oh, the submit button grays out. So not only how does it, you know, uh, change the display mode there, but then also what does my patch statements look like? Because you got to save this dynamic set of inputs as well. Now, I also want to remind you guys, if you watched a video from a few months ago called a Better Power Apps Data Model, we built this app, right? And so the idea in this app was that the users could maintain their own questions, right? So they could add a new question into the mix. And when they added a new question into their SharePoint list or whatever the data source was, it would just magically show up over here. So this one was using a gallery because I wanted the repeating nature of a gallery. Whereas over here, we're going to talk about the scrollable screen. So I just want to make sure that you're not like, you know, intermixing the two concepts. They're two different things. They have two different uses. And you might be able to kind of mix and match them, but in reality, I think of these as two different concepts. So, and if you haven't seen this one, I'll put a link, I don't know, somewhere up there, a little fly out card, so you can click on it and go see that video as well. Okay, so we're not, we're not gonna talk about the chore report anymore though. We're gonna go over here. Cool, cool. So let's minimize this, and let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a new screen over here. So new screen, I'm gonna throw a blank screen on because this is the screen that I wanna populate with information. And then, you know, previously, what did I do? I went down here, you know, and I'd added a, my component. I've got my header component that I just carry around with me all the time. Woohoo! So then that way I can make my apps look nicer. You guys make fun of me for my ugly apps too much, which you should. It's deserved. Okay, so we've got a screen ready. So now we have a screen ready. What we're going to do is we're going to go back up here to a new screen. And so we're going to click on scrollable. And so when you do this, it adds a whole bunch, right? And for a long time, this really overwhelmed me. I'm like, what what is all this right i don't I, I just needed like a scrolling section i don't know this is this is too much for me so that's why what we're going to do is we're going to come over here i'm going to click on the canvas so i'm going to canvas one over here on the left actually and then what we're going to do is we're just going to say hey you i want to copy you we're going to go back to our screen where i feel comfortable Ooh, power apps 911 purple I feel better and we're going to paste that over here and so then now look i've brought that in 
And so I can make it the whole screen or like I was just doing over on the other side, I could make it just a little section. So I want you to kind of think about that is you have to use the create new screen scrollable screen to get the canvas one component, but now we're done with it. So I'm just going to delete that screen because I've gotten what I wanted. I stole the piece. Okay. So then probably the easiest thing to do is just, just, just throw in like a, I don't know, an icon or something, just something we can see that this has some um, substance with the search icon. Oh, but see, I did it wrong. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's click on data card two, one. Now let's try and throw an icon in there. It's kind of like a gallery that you have to get it all right. But so there, you know, it's in there. And so if we're like, hey, I want to have a second card. Cool. All you're going to do is press add a section. And then it, notice here it made data card three for me. It made another section and we're just throw a different icon in there. And so then now we've got two sections. And if we hit play, you can see, oh, we don't have to scroll yet because we haven't gotten too far. So we'll scroll down here, we'll add a third section and we'll throw the trash. There we go. So then now it is automatically scrolling into place. Yay! So we're able to have this scrollable environment and it just automatically figured out all the scroll. Right? I didn't configure anything. You, you guys have seen everything I've done. I didn't do nothing. So that is the basis of this. I can take this data card though. I can resize it, right? So maybe we want to make it so I don't need to scroll one of those three are on there. Now it just look like normal components or normal icons. Um, one of the things that I've been doing, especially like when I was trying to wrap my head around how this worked, was I just went over here on the right and I just set the border to like a one. And so then that way every card had a border. And then I, and I think, can I, I think I can even hold down control and click on both of them. So all three at once, we'll set the border to three. Or not 23, that's too big. I set three. Oh, I was set at two. Apparently three is not a number I can use. But so then now you can kind of see the borders in there. So it gives you a kind of vision. So that, that was just one of those things I had to do to help myself understand. But now that you've got the idea that you've got these little data cards and it's not like a gallery where you just configure the top one and they all just inherit, each one is its own separate unit that you can configure how you want. But now that you kind of understand that, you know, so it's real easy just to throw that label in here. I think on the other screen, you know, as like, you know, accounting approver. So something like that. Boom. And now I've got an accounting approver and we'll get rid of the cute little icon. He served his purpose. And so then what am I going to do as well? I'm going to do a text input. And so then throw it right there. And so then now, oh, let's make this a little smaller. Notice each one has its own size as well, right? You don't have to make them all the same size, but there you go. That is how I built my accounting approver card. Now, another thing that I'm going to do real quick, just because this, once again, this was how I learned and I like you guys, I find you guys enjoy learning how I learn things. So I went in here and I kind of gave them all colors. I gave them each their own color and this just reinforces with me that they are separate and it's also going to help me in a minute because I'm going to show and hide them. And so that way I can kind of really see what is being shown and hidden. So there's our accounting approver. Now with the data card over here on the left, Notice uh, that it has the, um, as you probably expected, a visible property. So in a very simple high level form, what I did on the other side was I'm like, hey, here's a check. Oh, not a checkbox inside there. Let's delete that, get out of there and put, let's do a checkbox right here. So I had my checkbox, right? And this was accounting. And so remember a checkbox returns um, true or false. So I just went to this yellow card and I said, hey, your visible is now, what are we going to, where is that checkbox to? We'll just change that name to CHKACCT1 so it doesn't interfere with the one on the other screen. So we're just going to say, hey, you, you are check accounting one. And it's not text, it's dot value. Remember, that is true or false. So you can see that it's gone. If I check the box, it appears. What, what, what? It's as simple as that, folks. There is no craziness. Now, I used a checkbox here to make it really simple. In the customer app that I built this in the first time, what I did was I, um, I was doing lookups. So I did a lookup against the data source. I basically said, hey, if this person, you know, is in this department and it's this amount, do I need to show accounting approvers? So I kind of went and fetched the record around all that and that was how I was able to show or hide these. So I'm showing a real simple example here of just Reminding you though, you know, how you get to true or false, I don't care. Power Apps doesn't care. 
you just need to get a true or false here. So it can be lookups, it can be input controls, it can be calculations. Maybe there's one that only shows my birthday. And so then you'd have the date set to, you know, only on my birthday. All of these things are very possible and it's just up to you guys kind of how you do that. And then also remember that each one of these data cards is separate. So then, you know, I can go down here and be like, hey, you. So if I wanted to have its data card, maybe we'll have it based off of a, um, an input. How about this? So we'll just say text input. Oh, not there. So we'll just do a text input over here. And so we're going to call this, uh, what is this text input three? Who cares? And so we're going to say, hey, you, you are only visible if text input, how about this? Not is blank text input three dot text. And so right now it's not blank. If we go in here and delete it, delete it out, it disappears. As soon as we start to put in text, it shows up. So another way to think about it, right? So, all right, different one for that one. And we could just repeat this, you know, maybe we want to derive this next one based off of a variable. Maybe it's only show this one if the other two don't show. No big deal. You can build all of this cascading logic because it's there's nothing unique about these other than we just had to go steal it from the other screen. So that's one of the things I just wanted you guys to really kind of take from it. Now, another thing about it here that really annoyed me, like when I was building the over here, you know, I kind of had, I kind of had a pattern. I don't know if you notice, you know, dog's face, but I had these labels and such. And so if you click in here, what I wanted to kind of also show you is if you look at this label, right? So this is in the accounting, the label three, notice that it's, um, position is 20 X and 15 Y. So it's X and Y is coming off of its parent. So it's not off the top corner of the screen. It's off the top corner of the card. So then what's important for that is that maybe one of the things you want to do is make it so that all of these look the same. And I tried to drag them all the same. And I think I did a good job, but what I might've done is been like, Hey, you, you know what? I want your X not to just be 20, I'm just gonna go up here real quick. We'll use a slider. How about that? Right? These are the fun things I like to do. So put your slider right here. And so then we're gonna say, hey, you, your X is really just gonna be slider one dot value. And so then now if I slide, right, that is moving it. But what, the reason I show you that is because then I would just say, hey, you, you know what, your X is also just going to be X is all the bottom slider one dot value. So then that way, you know, I can move everything. I can move both of those at once. And then I would just repeat my way through here. So if we go to font fin, let's see, let's span fin and HR. So we're going to say, Hey, you, you, you now notice I can't click other controls. So I have to just stay inside of here, but I can at least say, you know what, you guys, both of you, your X is slider one dot. Uh, value. And so then now at least as I'm building this thing, everybody's X stays together. So just one of those little tricks, uh, clearly you wouldn't use a slider, you don't want your users dynamically doing it, but maybe you want to have a, uh, a variable that just says, you know, the X value and the Y value for all those components. So then that way, when you've got all of these cards that should look identical, you could just format them all the way once. And when your customer or your boss says, hey, move this thing over a little bit, you just change the variable and they would all change. Because unlike a gallery, where you just change the top row and all of them follow, you'd have to go change all of these separately. And in my customer's app, we had 21 of those fields, 21. So it was a lot of work, okay? So a couple other things I wanna cover over here before we switch back over. So another one that was driving me bonkers, and I could not remember how to do this for nothing, is this idea that I was like, oh, I want the green bar above, the green one above the uh, the orange one, or whatever color that is, I don't, I don't know my colors. So I kept trying to like click here, and I couldn't get any of the little four piece to th show up. So it's actually secretly hidden on the word card. If you grab the word card, then you can pull it up, and then you can move it as you need. So. That was uh, really annoying to me. It, I mean, I probably spent a half an hour, if we're being honest with each other, <laughs> trying to remember how to move these cards around. So I thought I would save you that half hour um, and remind you that you can move them that way. So other than that, you can rename these things. You can use them. They're, they're just a normal control. And that's why I just wanted to reiterate with you guys. Remember, you just it's, 
this this is daunting. Like, oh, what do I do with this thing? Right? I, I, I was always scared of this. But as soon as you realize you just grab this thing and take it to another screen and not use their cute little screen, then it just it was just so much easier for me. So that's why I just wanted to make sure you guys understood that portion. Okay, so I think that was really what I was after. You know, I want to make sure you understand how to get it, how to show them, how to hide them, rearrange them. So now let's switch over to the other screen and let's talk a little bit about how we use these, um, or you know, some of the, the other logic I kind of had in here. And so, you know, as you probably guessed now, the visible property for this particular data card was just if the value input amount was greater than 100. So that was how that one showed up. All of these are just tied like we just showed. But so then, you know, with my submit button, we've got to do two things. And let's actually start with the display mode. So what I ended up doing here, and we won't spend a lot of time on it, but a few minutes. So what I did was I'm like, hey, if all of these are blank, that's what this says. If all four of those check boxes over here are blank, then we want to be disabled. Or if the accounting one is checked, right? So remember, because check account dot value returns true or false. So if this is true and is blank is true, if both of these are true, then I don't want, I want to block, um, I want to set it to disabled. So I did the same thing for finance, HR, IT. So the idea is that if, you know, let's get rid of this first. So if all of these are deselected, then we can't submit. If this one is selected, well, we got to have an amount in here. If that is selected, but this is blank, we can't submit. But if that's not blank, then it would go to this one. So that is what we're trying, what I did here with the, the display logic here. That's all this is, is every one of these is, you know, I needed a separate line for each one. Hey, if it's true, make sure that is blank is not also true. Or if it is, don't let them submit. That's what it says. And then finally, or if the bottom, you know, how much do you want to do is blank. So if any of those are true. And a lot of times when I try to write these formulas, it's a lot easier for me to write the negative. I'm a negative person. No, <laughs> the reason it's a lot easier to be like, all right, these are the scenarios where I need it disabled. If none of these things are going on, then it should be enabled. And that's how I can control the submit button. Cool. Okay. So that's how we control whether or not they could click the button. What do we do when they click the button? So on select, so I'm going to patch and I just did a collection as my data source here because I want to make it so remember all my training.powerapps911 curated content customers, they all have the ability to download this app. And so I just wanted it to work for them without a data source. So that's why I used the collection as a data source. But it, this would work the same if it was SharePoint or SQL or CDS or Oakdale or whatever you can think of. Anyway, so we're going to patch our data source defaults. So create a new record. And so then request amount equals the input amount. Pretty straightforward. So then what I did here is I said, all right, accounting approver. Well, if it is blank, then just patch in blank. And if it's not blank, then patch in input account.txt. So that was how I set up the logic here. Because remember, if it's blank, if accounting.txt is blank, what does that mean? That means they didn't check the box over there. So, so that was one way um, to do it. The other way that I did it in uh, a different app was instead of you know, checking if it was blank, I basically said, hey, if it is, um, if check, uh, check accounting.value, and then I'd have to write this thing the other way. So I'd be like, all right, then you go over here. So, so if they checked the box, then we want to write whatever they put. Oh, what did I just do? Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. What I wanted to do was I wanted to get rid of that, paste in this. It clearly did not take my thing. Jeez, old Pete. Let's try this again. Control X, doop. And we're going to put this down its own line. So that way this thing can quit messing with me. If check accounting value, then paste in that. Oh, look, you pasted the right thing that time. Thank you. There we go. So if the uh, if the box is checked, then paste whatever's in the, the label. If not, then put in the uh, nothing, right? Blank, blank. So this is how I wrote the logic around um, patching all of these different things. And I just basically ended up having, you know, so you've got this type of logic. Oh, let's put our thing right here. I should have divided this up earlier. 
So if accounting approver, so we did that one. If finance approver, and then we did that one, and then we'll go down here, if HR approver, and then finally if uh, IT approver. So that was how I wrote the logic in this particular one, is each one of those. Um, another way that I had to do it in someone else's app for other reasons was I had a separate patch line, basically for every one that was checked because there's a little bit more logic going on in that app. Um, it was very slow, but it was, it was required. So the thing here is you just want to remember that you don't want, you got to kind of think about the logic. If you're going to show and hide these data cards, you probably don't want to patch the data cards if you have inputs in them if there's nothing there to uh, patch. So just kind of make sure you think through that as you go through this solution as well. So, and with that, I think that's all the pieces of this I wanted to show you. Um, you know, shout out to Twitter. Someone on Twitter said, hey, you should make a video on Canvas Ones. And I said, cool. So thanks, George, for that. It was very kind of you just to, you know, give me that idea, this thing I want to make in this video today. Um, as always, if you're a subscriber over on training.powerapps911.com, all those monthly subscriptions now include the ability to download all these YouTube apps. So go grab that and download it or go check it out if you're not a subscriber today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I answer all of them, sometimes in a very timely fashion, sometimes I'm a week or two behind. So if, uh, you know, but I, I get to them all. So I promise I will well, make my way through that list. Um, and other than that, you know, it is a holiday here in the U.S., so I think I'm going to go grill some food, have some things, you know, sit around, get fat, that type of stuff. I hope you had a great weekend, great week. Looking forward to kicking off fall and all the fun things we have to learn. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.